Aloha, my name is Lois Ann Yamanaka, and I'm the author of this book, Snow Angel, Sand Angel, illustrated by Ashley Lukashevsky. We both grew up here in the islands of Hawaii, and I'm super stoked to be able to read it to you today. So here we go. Mrs. Kurokawa is teaching us about seasons, autumn, winter, spring, and summer. The whole class will make dioramas about the season they pick out of her straw beach hat. Don't let me get winter, I say to myself. I reach in and spin the little peepers around. Winter, I've never seen real snow. My brother, Timbo, gets winter too. To decorate his diorama, he uses cotton balls for snow on the ground, dried branches for dormant trees, and white glitter to sprinkle on cotton ball bald spots. He even makes little origami snowflakes that hang from fishing line over his snowman. My father helps me finish mine. Migration, I write. Some birds fly away because it gets too cold. And then I stop. The birds don't fly away from Hawaii in the winter. They come home. You're right, Claire Bear, my father says. In the winter time, the golden plover comes home to our backyard. He's skinny and hungry from flying 3,000 miles nonstop from Alaska. I put my golden plover in the middle of the field. But this all makes me sad. I have never seen snow. We have snow here in Hawaii, my father tells me. I'll drive you up to Mauna Kea after the next snowstorm. My eyes grow big with excitement. And that very weekend, he takes my mother, Timbo, and me to the top of the tallest mountain in the world if you measure from sea floor to summit. But the snow on Mauna Kea isn't anything like I imagined. Why is this snow like blocks from the Hilo Ice Factory? It's three days old, my father sighs. We're too late for the fine snow. The storm came on Wednesday night. Old snow, I muttered. Someday, I will live in a place with new snow, not the old snow like we have here on Mauna Kea, big island of Hawaii. Don't run around too much on the summit or you'll get dizzy, my father reminds me. We're nearly inside the heavens. There's a lot less oxygen up here, so you better take it easy. Ah, oh, cripes, I tell him, out of breath and so dizzy, I think I'll be sick. They run around in snow in the movies. Someday, I will open my back door, run through a yard piled high with white snow, and never get altitude sickness. We won't have to drive miles and miles up a winding road between gray and black lava fields fallen ohia lehua trees and patches of scrub grass just to get to the snow. Protect your hands so you don't get frostbite and don't aim snowballs at Timbo's head, my father chides. Ah, some mittens, I grumble, and some snowballs. Someday, I won't have to wear my father's old socks loose and wet over my cold hands. I will put on real mittens and I'll make soft, fluffy snowballs, not the crunchy icy wads that nearly knocked Timbo over. Sorry, Claire, but you have to keep warm, my mother says as she pulls a beanie tight over my ears. Uh, this is all we've got. Someday, I will have a real snow hat and a real wool scarf, not an old beach towel that my mother cuts in half for Timbo and me to wear around our necks. Cheer up, my mother calls to us as she tries to snap some pictures. No way, I yell back. I glare at the camera while Timbo herky-jerks me on the sugarcane truck inner tube between the sharp points of rocks. 
Someday I will ride a real sled that whizzes smoothly over the snow. Timbo makes two chunky mounds into a triangle shaped body and head for our snowman. I've got two tiny lava rocks for the eyes, he says, placing them in the melting mound. And I found this Ma Money branch for his pipe, my father says. My mother puts an ume where his nose should be. I made this pickled plum from our own tree. They stand back and admire the lumps of ice. Come on, Claire Bear, my father calls. He places his ugly hunting cap on the stunted lump. Someday, I will make a real snowman straight from the books my father reads to me. I will roll snow around the yard until I make three huge balls for a giant snowman with a corncob pipe and two eyes made out of coal, just like the song says. Someday, I will see snow falling from the sky and be like the Inuit who can name a hundred different kinds of snow. Native Hawaiians know the names of a hundred winds and all of the ocean's currents, my father tells me. The stars too, each and every beautiful star. I don't say anything. I'm thinking that I will become a real snow angel. I will grow wings and fly away, rise up from the highest mountain, and take myself to another place more beautiful and special than this island, the only place my father and his father before him have ever known, the only place I know. My father takes us to Hapuna Beach the next day before the new year. The beach is always right in your backyard, he says to me as he opens the car door to the smell of kiave trees and ocean mist. I run over the sand timbo behind me to the waters of Kauai Hai, the same color of the cloudless sky over Mauna Kea. I make a sandball and throw it at Timbo, who dodges it by slipping under a large winter swell. You've just given me an idea, Claire Bear, my father says. He starts with his own ball of wet sand. He covers this with fine dry sand, then wet sand again, then dry sand. Soon he has built a huge sandman. Use these two cowrie shells for his eyes, Timbo says, placing them in the sandman's head. And here's some driftwood for his pipe. My father hands a gray branch to Timbo. A smooth pebble for his nose, offers my mother. I begin gathering tiny pieces of white honeycomb coral. For the sandman smile, I tell them. My mother finds seaweed for his long hair of many colors. Timbo wraps a beach towel scarf around his neck, and my father places his own straw hat on the sandman's head. I drag the sugarcane truck inner tube to the water. My poi dog Spam barks as my mother carries her surfboard into the first small wave. Then Spam and my mother hop on board. My mother tells us the names of the sea creatures. Hinalea, beautiful green rats. Manini, striped convict tang. Lao Hao, golden butterfly fish. Humu humu nuku nuku apu a a painted triggerfish. She shows us the rise and fall of Honu's tiny head and the glide of his shiny turtle shell. My father names the hundred winds that carry the fragrance of these waters to us near the far reef. I run up and down the sloping shore, the waves catching me only when I get tired. At the beach, I never feel dizzy or out of breath. Come, Claire, my father says, calling me over. Watch! Soon he is making a sand angel just for me. I lie down next to him. Father angel, mother angel, son angel, daughter angel. You can grow wings in this place, he says, 
this very beautiful place that we know so well. I stand back and look at the magnificent Sandman, the sand angels with wings that can fly over the mountains and waters of this island, singing the names of a hundred winds. The tide begins to rise, filling sand angel wings with soft sea foam. I watch my Sandman melt away, but I'm not sad. The setting sun is a volcanic orange sphere hovering above the horizon. A green flash of light follows it. That flash you see but once in a lifetime when the sun disappears on this beautiful island of lava fields, sandy beaches, rainforests, fiery volcanoes, sacred mountains, and yes, even snow. Mahalo a nui. Thank you so much for listening to my reading of this book. My wish for you is to someday see the place in nature of your dreams. I hope you enjoyed reading this book with me.